Bonjour, hi! Welcome to my clothing archive presented by The Digital Cowboy. Today, we will be focusing on Gio Watanabe's debut menswear collection, the spring-summer 2002 collection of Gino Watanabe comme des garçons men. But before I start, I just want to say that you can support us by subscribing to our Patreon, where all the scans have been posted, or by making a donation. All the links are down below. Also, all garments in this video are up for sale on the web store with the rest of my Comme des Garçons, Yoji Yamamoto, and more. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and to follow us on Instagram at MyClothingArchive to get the latest news. So now let's start. But first, who is Junior Watanabe? Junior Watanabe was born in Fukushima in 1961. He studied at Bunka Fashion College before joining the Comme des Garçons label in 1984 as a pattern cutter. He says that there's nothing in particular that made him want to start fashion. Although, he thinks that the only influence may have been that his mother used to have a little made-to-order shop. Junior became in 1987 the designer of the women's wear line Tricot Comme des Garçons. Later in 1992, he launched his own women's wear line called Junior Watanabe Comme des Garçons, under the Comme des Garçons label. While he was presenting in Tokyo at first, he started presenting in Paris the following year. Then, in 2001, during the Spring Summer 2002 Paris Men's Fashion Week, Gino launched his own menswear line called Gino Watanabe Comme des Garçons Men under the Comme des Garçons label once again. His main goal was the pursuit of basics. Rika Akubo, the founder and creative director of Comme des Garçons, was only involved in this decision from a management point of view. After all those years of doing women's wear, it was Junior's first venture into menswear. However, according to an interview with Mr. I Fashion from December 2001, he chose menswear not because of his commitment to menswear itself, but because of his commitment to the basics of monozukuri. When discussing his work, Junio Watanabe often uses the word monozukuri. According to his American-born assistant and interpreter, it's very specific to Japanese culture. You can translate monozukuri to craftsmanship, but it's much more than that. It has more depth. It's more about the design aspect, the aesthetics, and how you create something. Still, he said in the same interview that both women's wear and men's wear are the same from the perspective of monozukuri, but that their differences lie in the size and in the mood of the clothes. And the edos behind Junior Watanabe comme des garçons men is clearly stated on the tag. Something real, something that has history, that has traditional shapes, our way of originality, a new feeling for basics. Here, something real is most probably a translation of the Japanese word honmono. In the same Mr. I fashion interview as the one from before, Junior said that he was committed to honmono. And when asked what is Honmono to him, Junior replied in English, Standard, history, complete work. The concept of authenticity is important in the context of Japanese fashion, as explained throughout W. David Marx's book, Ametora, How Japan Saved the American Style. It's a very good book, and I really recommend everyone to read it. According to the author, Japanese creativity in clothing for so long has been a manifestation of anxiety around authenticity. Is this thing real enough? This is how he explains the focus on imported goods and foreign labels in Japanese fashion. Still, Marx, the author, not Karl Marx, notes that this may only be a 20th century phenomenon as contemporary Japanese designers have learned from American fashion without being crushed by its legacy even gives Junya Watanabe as an example of this. So to summarize, Junya Watanabe was pursuing the basics of Monozukuri with a commitment to Honmono when he launched his menswear line. And this is how his debut collection of Junya Watanabe comme des garçons men came to be. Like a text message between two young lovers, Romeo and Juliet with cell phones, the words were printed on a peach colored shirt, white Levi's or flowered pens. You break my heart, you make me happy. Or, on a black t-shirt, worn with plaid pants and sneakers, the universal message of love, love, love. 
This fresh and charming opening to the Paris menswear of the spring-summer 2002 season by Junior Watanabe spelled out the fashion message, simple clothes, touch with romance. This was an excerpt from Susie Menke's column in the International Herald Tribune that came out a few days after the show. Indeed, the clothes have a simple yet impactful style, with messages printed on colorful shirts, cut and sew garments, and denim. Something noteworthy about the collection is that it was made partly in collaboration with Levi's because Junior wanted to put in something that was the real thing. This is because in Japan, as it is said in Ametora, Levi's represents the real authentic thing when it comes to denim. What drove people was the fact that there was something genuine about it and there was a history attached to it, a history which for the most part was abstract or alien. This approach is also felt in Junior's women's work collection of the same season, although he executed it in a totally different way. Instead, he took an haute couture approach to denim with washed denim dresses, ruffles and laces, coupled with floral patterns. In this collection, Gino Watanabe transformed the basic denim jeans with colors, geometric stripes and plaids, and messages. He made the ordinary extraordinary. He built new and profound layers of meaning on top of American fashion. You can even say that he protected and strengthened the original for the benefit of all in the process. And now, about those messages. A lot has been said about them, but here are the facts. Before anything else, Junior was interested in the expression of the text rather than their content. The latter was concocted after he had asked his design team to contribute from the heart on the subject of love and morality. The result has been a mix of extremely touching poems with seemingly random expressions. The result was not self-consciously arty like Jenny Olzer's poems. It was a light-hearted take on a world where an entire generation is on message. One of the earliest examples of poetry and fashion can be traced back to the 1920s when artist Sonia Delaunay collaborated with Dadaist poets Tristan Zara and Joseph Deltey on a collection of color block dresses featuring their words on the arms and skirts. Since then, poems have been scarce on the runway. Still, I would like to point out that the Japanese label Beauty Beast did it a few years before Junior. Also, I think it's important to mention the collaborative work between Elmut Lang and Jenny Olzer. There have been a lot of speculations about the random expressions like curry rice, German dog, watermelon, etc., which appeared in Junior's debut menswear collection. Unfortunately, I have no solid explanation for those. However, I did some research, and since at least the 1980s, you can find either Japanese or English texts with mistakes, swear words, or random words on t-shirts. And so, it may have just been a little joke about Japanese imitations of American fashion, or vice versa. Please tell us what you think in the comments down below, I'm curious to hear your opinion on the subject. Even though Junior said that he was primarily interested in the expression of the text, I couldn't find any information about this process. However, I found something oddly similar in the book Bareback a Tomato Project, which came out in 1999. It may be hard to believe, but there is indeed a connection between Junior and the London-based art collective Tomato. Some of their members had walked for Comme des Garçons en Plus, Spring Summer 1998. But I don't know, maybe Junior saw this or maybe he didn't. Now, here are the pieces I have from the collection in my clothing archive. Everything is up for sale on the web store with a lot more. You can find the link in the description down below. But before I start, I will show you how to identify pieces from the collection. The first step is for the garment to be part of the line Junior Watanabe comme des garçons men. Then, you must have AD 2001 written on the care label. This is because at Comme des garçons, while the autumn winter collections are manufactured the same year as the release, the spring summer ones are manufactured a year before. And so, when you see AD 2001, it means that it's either autumn winter 2001-2002 or Spring-Summer 2002. 
And since Junior Watanabe, comme des garçons men, debuted in Spring Summer 2002, it's the only possible choice when you see AD 2001. So here are the pieces I have from the collection. As I said earlier, all the pieces are up for sale on the web store. So first of all, I have those two grey cotton t-shirts, one with love written all over it, and one with jam written over some stars. You can find many variants of those on the market. The love one is reminiscent of some of Junior's prior work, like this t-shirt from Autumn Winter 1999-2000. Next up, I have this red knitted cotton t-shirt with watermelon written on it. By using this knitted cotton fabric, it is an unconventional take on the classic short sleeve t-shirt. Finally, I have a pair of black denim jeans with curry rice written over the back pocket and another pair of white denim jeans with a poem on the back. Both of them are not tagged as Levi's, but they have a similar cut to a pair of Levi's 501. The poem reads as follows. The water enriches my body and the breeze brushing across my cheek is refreshing. The sun warms me and the earth gently embraces my body. I do not want to lose this. What is it that I should protect? The collection was extremely well received at the time. Susie Menkes said a few days after the show that Junior must have made Rika Kubo proud. She wrote that this debut menswear show was original, assured, and fresh as the paint box colors and block lettering. Still, this light-hearted and bright approach was not singular to Junior that season. Here is what Susie Menkes said about Spring Summer 2002. The opening shows of Spring Summer 2002 season, dominated by Belgian and Japanese designers, offered a modern, masculine wardrobe in which color and graphic print had zest. After a long period of angst, fashion's angry avant-garde with a penchant for dark clothes, tortured shapes and destroyed fabrics had turned sunny side up. The departure from minimalism that began a few seasons earlier had become clear with a poetic and gentle texture offering a tribute to nature. At this point in time, jeans had become more standard in luxury fashion. Various brands presented their own take on them with bleached and vintage processed jeans that were less casual and more sophisticated. This was a perfect context for Junia to release this kind of collaboration with Levi's. To explore the subject further, I contacted the one and only denim and pop culture expert, Samu Taro. Here are the key moments from our conversation. Yeah, so I think during that kind of time, during the 60s, there was just like this like cultural phenomenon around denim. Like people, I think at first it was just like the younger kids who became obsessed with them, it became like a wider kind of cultural thing. And mm -hmm. obviously the denim or Levi's specifically wasn't readily kind of like accessible then. And once it became like this huge thing, I think as people became more obsessed with like American kind of like lifestyle and kind of the look and obviously jeans is like a like symbol of america um right. so um yeah it was like super hard for jeans for people to get hold of them so around kind of like yeah the late 60s and then 70s and <laughs> levi's was still very much more traditional at that point mm -hmm. um right. but like you said you've got like designers like helmet lang and they completely like recontextualize like what denim could be and he wasn't really kind of like changing anything dramatically about jeans he was still kind of keeping it um like what it kind of it is it's like a typical pair of five pocket jeans and jackets yeah. but he was doing these kind of beautiful washes that really kind of like paid homage to like traditional washes and um detail and it was interesting i guess because it's coming from levi's japan as well i don't think levi's were really doing too many collaborations before that point i know they did some with stussy in the 90s so i don't think junior was the first one but it was definitely one of the first ones, I think, kind of to be on like the catwalk and in a completely different kind of context. And that's his first one that he ever did. And it's amazing yeah. that it still has yeah that kind of enduring appeal. I think when I first started my Instagram and posting, it was definitely one of the first ones that I posted up on it. Right. People just love it. I think the fact that it's got this kind of beautiful poem on it and mm -hmm. the jeans now that they're probably yeah over 20 years old, the way that they've kind of aged. And that's what people love about denim is that it only gets better with age but with the print as well you've got that kind of cracking that kind of happens with it and then this beautiful poem as well it's like quite a romantic thing i guess mm -hmm. to promote the collection 
Photos of models wearing the garments in front of red vending machines with white polka dots appeared in Mr. I Fashion from December 2001. The pictures have been going around the internet for some time already, and there's a lot to say about them. Some of you may have recognized the style, because it is none other than Yayoi Kusama who came up with the design of the vending machines. For those who don't know her, Yayoi Kusama is a Japanese contemporary artist that has been around for decades. She started using polka dots in the 50s, and it became her trademark. She is very influential, and I recommend everyone to read more about her. In any case, the red vending machines with white polka dots were part of Coca-Cola's No Reason art project. The project took place in 2001 to promote Coca-Cola and their new slogan in Japan, No Reason. The project consisted of five artists presenting their work in their own way in public spaces in Tokyo and Yokohama. The artists were Yayoi Kusama, photographer Nobuyoshi Araki, final home designer Kosuke Tsumura, as well as Hiroko Ichihara and Tom Dixon. It was a fresh combination of art and advertising. Honestly, I just really love Coca-Cola's promotional material from this era. Especially the slogan, which sounds really punk to me, like no reason, it almost sounds like no future. And the ads were actually really good too. Now, the collection has appeared in a multitude of editorial, like in this one from Men's Non Know from January 2002. However, I think that my favorite appearance of the collection in a piece of media is in The Importance of Being Idle, a 2004 documentary on Papa Wemba and La Sap. SAP is an acronym for Société des Ambianceurs et des Personnes Élégantes, which means Society of Ambience Makers and Elegant People. An adherent of la SAP is called a sapper or sappers. It's a subculture centered around the cities of Kinshasa and Brazzaville in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Republic of Congo, respectively. It is very hard for me to summarize uh, La Sap in a few words, but I will say that it's the art of putting together an elegant look. Honestly, if you don't know about La Sap, I'm urging you to do some research on the subject, like either on YouTube or on Google, but it's totally worth it, I'm telling you. In some parts of this movie, filmed in 2003, you can see Levi's jeans and some shirts from Junior's Spring Summer 2002 collection. I love this because the style of the sapper is absolutely immaculate. They wear those pieces better than anyone I've ever seen. But also, it shows how much the collection was an instant success within certain fashion circles. Since then, some of the pieces from Junior's Spring-Summer 2002 menswear collection have been reissued with 10 Corso Como as of Spring-Summer 2010. Additionally, a nod to the collection has appeared in Junior's Autumn Winter 2017-2018 menswear collection. Even to this day, Gino Atanabe's debut menswear collection is one of the most recognizable fashion collections and it is still extremely popular. For example, Lucas Sabat has worn pieces from the collection on multiple occasions over the past few years. Similarly, Lil Yuzivert has been seen wearing the collection, like many other style icons. There have also been a few parodies and copies of the garments. Thank you for watching my clothing archive. Don't forget to like and subscribe and to follow us on Instagram. Like I said at the beginning, any contribution to the Patreon or to our PayPal is appreciated. Thank you. See you next time.